finishing it off with, sister. So uh, we want, I want to show them the size of this mirror. Can you, it's a big mirror. It's very large. We are kicking off with a project featuring our classic cherub molds. And I've had this sitting at home for like ever in my bathroom. And the other day I realized this would be a perfect base to feature our oh, classic this isn't cherubs. Oh, the one we bought at the thrift store? No. Because that one had two of them, huh? And I was like, it was different I than this. Okay. I don't remember exactly what it was like. So okay. we, I just wanted to give you, you a view that. of the, of the um, mirror itself. And let's get a little close up of our, in fact, let me get one out of package of our classic cherub molds. Perfect and you're going to see these Day, you guys. in action. Um, we call them classic cherub because so often cherubs are used in architecture and they have that, um, that kind of Roman look to them mm -hmm. um, that mix so well with all Very kinds of other castings. So we're yes. going to go, I mean, check this out. We're thinking we're going to do this big one right here mm -hmm. and then a little one on each side. And then we're going to go in and kind of really fill in with the little um, accessory pieces. And really just gob it on gob there them on. go crazy. Yes. Because we're going to just really do kind of a maximalist, um, over-the-top look with this piece. Yes. So let's get going. Okay. Here, I'll use the other one and we can cast at the same time. Good time. Good idea. Mm -hmm. In fact, once I start casting, lay it. you can start laying it. Yeah. Totes. Um, do we have cornstarch? We do. Okay, we so do. a question we often get asked is, do you need to use um, a release in our molds? The answer is you can, but you don't have to. Just try and see what works best for you. I actually never use a release, but Josie often does. Most of the time she does. So it just depends on what you're comfortable with. And it depends on the condition of your clay. Our clay uh, is my favorite clay. I really believe it's the best clay on the market. It's an artist quality, not craft quality. So it's beautiful. It holds definition really well. It's our air dry clay, IOD air dry clay. Okay. Okay, so this cherub, the wingspan is precisely, oh my, it's <laughs> almost nine inches. It's eight and three quarter in inches from tip to tip, a little over than three quarter. So like whatever the next one up from that. <laughs> and in breadth, it is five, whoops, five and a half, or I'm sorry, five and a quarter in breadth from tip to tip this way. On the first thing we're gonna do is cast and lay our molds in. And we are using our, um, not ours, but tight bond, quick and thick wood glue. It is one that we use with many, many projects that we do with our molds on wood. Our micro room is awesome. It is, and what it allows you to do is, I'm just gonna show you, as you're pulling across, whether you use your fingers like I'm doing here or a palette knife or tool, it gives you that edge to get a clean, release and a cleaner cut so that um you don't have as much cleanup to do all right so i'm How's going to come in? great i don't think when I using either. the molds you want to have the back as flat as possible you don't want a lot of um would you call that undulations is that the right word a lot of it's a fancy topography <laughs> you want it flat so that yeah. the uh, wood glue really adheres to your piece you do want to um, store it in a nice zippered bag. Today we're going to set it under um, or on it. We're going to set a fan on it to create kind of a light crust. The If you are able to do that, that's better because when you're going painting on um, the wet clay, you can lose some of your dimension when you're brushing it on. So the best thing to do is to at least give you enough time to create a nice crust to harden the top and not do that. Um, avoid best cracking. way to avoid cracking. Um, a slow dry helps to avoid. It's like when you bake a cake. 
um, slow and even baking or a cheesecake is even a better example. Slow, even baking reduces tension that's caused by one part being cooked faster than the other and then it cracks. Okay, it's the same with this. Um, if it dries slower and more evenly, then you have less cracking. In fact, one of the upsides to painting it before it has dried or in the drying process is that you actually even out that drying time. Um, or it takes longer to dry, but it's m happening more evenly. So you don't get tension and stress. Um, however, air dry clay, what part of it is cracks. Um, and you kind of got to either decide, get yeah, get that. comfy with that. Um, if you don't like cracks, you can absolutely use resin. Works fabulously as well. And you get a perfect casting, essentially no no crack or variation. There's also ways to go in after. So for instance, we're gluing on our uh, mold wet. We're gonna allow a crust, then we're gonna paint it. Now tomorrow, when everything's completely dry, we will have some um, character happening. So there'll be a little lift, there'll be some cracks, there'll be some areas that are different. And we can easily go back in. In certain areas, we can just add more paint, but we can also fill in with more clay in any areas that we want to. But there's a lot of times when we see those areas and we like them, so we keep them and we work with that. So it just depends on how it turns out. Exactly. And reframing the way you look at cracks and imperfections. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Loving okay. this. I feel like that's going to end. Yeah. I, I, I'm liking, I, but if you want to go and keep filling, I'm good mm -hmm. with that too. But I'm mm -hmm. feeling like I like it. You can it start laying it in. Like that. I'm just going to create some for the On the sides? Oh, good to idea. Come, to come and create some yeah. down the sides here. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to start gluing. Okay. Um, and I'm really got to pay attention. One of the things we really enjoy doing with our molds is, let me see if we can get more, more of you this way. There we go. Um, we really enjoy pushing the molds together to create new shapes or cutting them apart and putting them back together like I'm doing down here. You can't really see it because it's off camera. Can we make it so we can see um, all of it or there we go. So down here I'm creating a shape for the side right here and I'm just putting a lot of different shapes together and I'm going to make them work. If you look at our mold, you will see, like if you look on Pinterest and you look at different casting configurations and layouts, you can emulate almost any layout that you see with IOD molds. You just need to get creative, cut some apart, put them together, and we call that Frankensteining, and we really enjoy that. I think Josie already mentioned this, but always make sure to keep your clay. I am the worst at this. Keep your clay in the bag as even as you're using it because it does not take long for it to start to dry out. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. We're almost done, guys. Thanks for your patience while we put this together. Okay. That one more ditty. Does that squishing that down? Squishy, squishy. I'm going to eliminate some of this excess. Wherever there's excess glue, you guys know you get a little cracking in your paint finish. Usually, it, either clean it off or go with it. I tend to go with things because um, it's easier. <laughs> <laughs> but 
you can definitely pizza. use a brush and clean it off the whatever excess glue comes out. And you want your edges to be down nice and tuck tuck those edges down. And as it dries, check on it and tuck those edges down so you really get it nice. And we've added some gentle but even mm -hmm. pressure to make sure that the whole thing is really sucked down to the surface. So, mm -hmm. oh, these need to be glued. All right. All right. Okay. Do we have a second glue? We do. We have all all where the glue. Are, where is the oh. inspiration from, from the, the Oops. <laughs> <laughs> wow, just I punch it right in the face. <laughs> I punched one of the cherubs in the face. I apologize. Get in there. One of the challenges when you're casting is to, when you're gluing, is to get get it nice and seated but don't squish your dimension so do it with mm -hmm. care i like to be generous with the glue obviously it creates a little more cleanup but i want to make sure that the glue is really covering the back so i'm not skimpy and also we it's should have mentioned that we have a whole video that goes into depth and detail on our molds and our air dry clay. So many of these questions, if you miss them, I actually recommend watching that video rather than going back through the live. It's cleaner, it's to the point, and it's not a live, so there's not all the chitter chat and stuff. You get right to the point. So that is, Stephanie actually can link you please stephanie thank you <laughs> link you to the molds oh, basics video sorry about that guys <laughs> getting these cherubs down okay <sighs> this is really fun this is going to be beautiful what color are we going to paint it mm. are we going to use the stinky gold i think we should just use the stinky gold we have enough stinky gold mm-hmm mm-hmm all right. All right. We'll need they to put a little we'll, tiny jar. We'll need to open that door and put a little fan. Make sure we have good ventilation. Or do we? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just teasing. Also, you want to make sure when using the air dry clay that you have every part of the mold. It just reminded me of that because I don't know if you can see here, these little wings wanted to come out over the edge. And if that happened, those would be vulnerable. So I just tuck them back in, just squish them back so that every part of the mold has a backing behind it. Yes. Just creates Supported. more support. Squish it down. And these are actually really solid. Um, air dry clay, surprisingly, you can ask Sarah. She has had to chisel off molds from some of our projects so we could reuse the board castings <laughs> what did i say no no oh never mind <laughs> anyway she um they are really hard to get off they're very very firm nice i am just checking out my um, mold arrangement from the other side to make sure I'm lining up so that it doesn't look too off. I'm the opposite of a perfectionist, but I don't want it to be so obvious that it's off that you can see it and it looks funky. I love getting messy with projects. It's so fun. And it's like, do you guys love the feeling of after you do something and you're just waiting for it to dry and the next day you can't wait to go see what it looks like? You feel like a little kid on Christmas. What does it look like? How did it turn out? And then every time you see that piece that you worked so hard on and came out so beautiful, even in all of its little imperfections, you just feel a sense of accomplishment. That's one thing I love about DIY decor. Mm. All right. Molds are laid in. We're going to take this to the back. We're going to kind of speed dry it and speed dry it. And we're going to get our mirror. Okay. So let's open the window and put a fan low moving out that way so that we have good oh, ventilation. Nice. Yeah, it? because this gold paint is... 
super stinky. Fuming. We it's call it fuming. stinky gold paint. Yes. Um, this was what I was using, and then there's mm -hmm. awesome. Okay. And I'll use fabulous. Um, and I tend to use a brush that, or oh, but you can clean it with a a I'll solvent based I'll paint brush these cleaner too if you want to paint this one. Okay. Paint You'll paint what too? I'll paint these. Oopsie doopsie. These okay. Areas. And I'll just. Okay. You got my spot. <laughs> Do you want to trade? Let's trade. No, I'm good. No, no, no. No, really. No, really. No. So I think this is considered liquid leaf. It's a stinky gold paint. Comes in different brands that seem to be basically exactly the same. The, this solvent type. Um, and that's oh, what we are using. You guys, look at that. I feel like they need a little bit of a close-up. Yeah. Oh, I do love this paint. It is so powerful. Oops. I'm trying to get what you're doing in there, but I've got oh, some limitations okay. with this arm. Yeah, I wanted to get nice and close with yours. So that, that's really the most interesting part. Oops anyway because the gold is gorgeous but it is boom gold needs a little more depth yeah a little i love the bling but i feel like it, like it needs richness sometimes when it's just the gold is mm -hmm. so much gold it can lack richness and not feel as um sophisticated right wow it's so pretty though it is Gosh. You another little trick for if you're a gold lover um, is use something like this for the majority of the project, but then do go in with some leafing to um, mm. pop and add another kind of layer of goldness. And they have <laughs> goldness. Is that shades. a word? Leafing has many different shades, so you could even mix the different shades of gold, mm -hmm. antique gold or bright gold. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's got a lot of goldness. This is fun. Sorry, I'm losing, it is my, fun. I'm losing myself in this process. This is really fun. You guys have to do this. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's molten gold the way yeah, it Yeah, the way it lays on. It's and just like velvety. Kind of spreads. I got really, I'm just noticing. I got so messy with my glue. And you can really see it. <laughs> Don't do that. Clean up any excess glue. I really love to be generous with my glue. <laughs> Make me paint you with some gold. <laughs> we definitely need to, um, tomorrow, when this has had a good chance to really dry, mm -hmm. I feel like getting in here and really getting some distress done and mm -hmm. using a either wax or glaze, we can figure that out, mm -hmm. but adding some antique units. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely some something to get in the crevices and really build up those areas mm -hmm. with some... Mm, just some vintage goodness. Yes. And maybe we can disguise some of my glue mishap. It'll just make add it texture. look like build up. It'll be texture. over the years. Yeah. Years of build up. <laughs> <laughs> years and years of build up. Okay, so, guys. I this think has it's painted. Let's. Let that dry, and this will be one that we will come back. Come back. We to want to add some depth. Do a blog post or something do a like that. Vintage. Let you know when it's finished. Yeah. We'll get it staged and pretty for mm -hmm. you. 